Uh, 10% of this talk is memes, so yes. stay with me. So I'm going to talk to you about Kubernetes API, but before I have 15 seconds to explain to you what Kubernetes is. If you can see that meme, that's enough. Because when you submit, when, whenever you talk to Kubernetes, whenever you're submitting anything to Kubernetes, you send a YAML file. And you expect something to happen on the other side. A YAML file that kind of looks like this. You need to create a deployment, and you stick in your containers, you put some information in, and then you can take that YAML file, use your kubectl command line, and submit that to the Kubernetes cluster. The cluster receives the request, but before anything can happen, it ends up in a component called the API server. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I know this sounds boring, but it will get interesting in a second. Because in the API server, it's not just one component. It's multiple components. The first one is authentication. Are you allowed to even uh, come into the cluster? The way that works is it, there's no uh, internal mechanism. You have to connect it with an external system, like OpenID Connect. Once you've been authenticated, some information about you gets sent to the next component, which is the authorization component. So you've gone into the cluster. Can you do what you're trying to do? So take some information from the previous component after authentication and passing it on to the next, next one now. You might be thinking, well, that's kind of boring, authentication, authorization. Now this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to talk about validation admission controllers. And there's two types which we're going to talk about. So uh, what the purpose of uh, mutation uh, admissions controller is to take your request and modify it. And then the, the modification happens in a way that uh, the request comes in. You haven't put in some file details, some extra details inside your, inside your YAML file, for example. Uh, you don't put in how, sh how often should you pull images. So the mutation admission controller is going to look at your request and stick in some of the missing fields that you need for the cluster that cluster needs to be able to deploy it. And that's not the only field that it adds, not just one field. After you submit a file that has like maybe 12 or 13 lines on the other side, it goes through all these checks, as you can see, a number of checks, ingress class or whatever it might be, and the file ends up going from 15 lines to perhaps 150 lines. Well, that's, that's what it does. After it's done the uh, mutation, there's another component called the schema validation. And what, what that does is just basically checking if what you submitted, does it look like what we expect it to look like? Once that's done, we go to the validation admission controller. And the purpose of the validation admission controller is to check some things. And they are, well, whatever you submitted, is that correct? So after validation, validating, is this correct? For example, have you got the right certificates for the request you're trying to do? And uh, uh, have we got the light, uh, right, correct limits for you submitting in the cluster? As in, are you trying to over-provision your pod? So it's checking against that. So it's got a bunch of checks it does. And the, if one of, one of them fails, the request gets kicked off. So all of these components so far that you've seen, if at any point the request is not passed, it will get rejected and you'll get a response back. It will say, there's an error. But here's the interesting part. In those two uh, admissions controller, there's webhooks. That means you can connect it to external system. So we can use these webhooks to make our life a little bit more interesting. So far, what you've seen is just what's inside. So the first one is mutation admissions controller. What you can do is you can take a request and mutate it. For example, when you use service mesh like Istio, it sticks in a container inside every pod. And that's plugged in to the mutation admissions controller. So all it does is every time it sees a pod, it fills it in. And the next one is validation admissions controller. In my opinion, perhaps the most interesting one. This one checks if your request has the right things. For example, it will say your pod should not be running as root. Or the image you're trying to pull from your repository needs to come from a private repository that you're using, not from just any public repository, because who knows what's inside the container that could be running in your cluster. And you can write these rules yourselves. And, uh, or what you can do is you can plug in these tools inside your cluster. So you've got Open Policy Agent and some others. And you can write the policies. Example, uh, you just saw was pull in the image from a secret uh, private repo, or do not run something as root. And after all of that, your request then eventually gets into the etcd, the database that goes into the cluster. Once it's inside the cluster, the other components kick in. They can do what they need to do to spin up a pod or kill it. So I've got 15 seconds to summarize what you've just seen. But I thought, what better way to finish how you started with a meme? So all these things that you see are happening inside the API server. If any of those go wrong, 
your deployment doesn't work. Thank you very much. My name is Salman Iqbal, and I work for Appio. <laughs>